Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for September 2022. The housing downturn accelerated through August as falling values became more widespread, taking CoreLogic's National Home Value Index into a fourth consecutive month of decline. The National Index was down 1.6% over the month, which was the largest month-on-month -month decline since 1983. Every capital city, apart from Darwin, is now in a housing downturn, with a similar scenario playing out across the rest of state regions where only regional South Australia recorded an increase in housing values for the month. Sydney continued to lead the downswing, with values falling by 2.3% over the month. However, weaker conditions in Brisbane accelerated sharply through August, with values falling by 1.8%. After recording significantly stronger appreciation through the upswing, the fall in regional dwelling values is catching up with the capital cities. Regional home values were down 1.5% in August, compared with a 1.6% fall in values across the combined capitals. Between March 2020 and January 2022, regional dwelling values surged by more than 40% compared with a 25.5% rise for the combined capitals. The largest falls in regional home values are emanating from the commutable lifestyle hubs, where housing values had surged prior to the recent rate hikes. Over the past three months, values are down by 8% across the Richmond Tweed, 4.8% lower across the Southern Highlands and Shoalhaven market, and down 4.5% across Queensland's Sunshine Coast, as a few examples. Despite the recent weakness, housing values across most regions remain well above pre-COVID levels. Home values in all capital cities and rest of state regions, bar Melbourne, remained 15% or above the levels recorded back in March of 2020, implying most homeowners have a significant equity buffer before their home is likely to be worth less than what they paid. Rents are bucking the downwards trend, with our National Rental Index increasing a further 0.8% in August. The monthly rise has eased a little since peaking in May, when rents rose by 1%, but the current rate of rental appreciation remains well above average. Annual rental growth reached double digits at 10% over the 12 months to August for the first time since at least 2006 when CoreLogic rental statistics commenced. With rents consistently rising while housing values are broadly trending lower, gross rental yields are firmly in recovery mode. After Capital City gross dwelling yields bottomed out at the record low of 2.96% in February this year, yields have consistently risen to reach 3.29% in August. While capital city yields are still well below their pre-COVID decade average of 4%, considering the outlook for lower housing values and higher rents, we could see rental yields returning to around average levels over the next year. Brisbane's housing market took a sharp negative turn through August, recording the second largest month-on-month -month fall in housing values across the capitals, down 1.8%. The sudden transition into downturn comes after Brisbane housing values surged 42.7% higher through the upswing, adding roughly $234,000 to the median value. The decline was most evident across the detached housing sector, where values are down 3.2% since peaking in May, while the unit sector has been more resilient, posting a smaller 0.2% decline since its July peak. Home sales are trending lower, but remained about 20% above the five-year average over the three months ending August. The outlook for the housing market remains intertwined with the trajectory of interest rates. Forecasts for the terminal cash rate generally range from the mid-2% to the mid-3% range, although financial markets are pricing in a peak rate around 4% by August of next year. The range of forecasts for the cash rate highlights the sheer uncertainty associated with inflation, wages growth and monetary policy. As borrowing power is eroded by higher interest rates and rising household expenses due to inflation, it's reasonable to expect a further decline in consumer confidence and lower housing demand. The silver lining to lower housing prices is an improvement in some measures of housing affordability. The time needed to save a 20% deposit is trending lower for the first time in almost two years across the capital cities, while the dwelling value to income ratio has also started to reduce. As housing values trend lower and incomes rise, we expect to see a further reduction in these barriers to entering the housing market. However, on the downside for prospective home buyers, mortgage costs and rents are rising, and household budgets are stretched. The portion of annual household income required to service a new mortgage nationally increased to 44% in June, up from 40.4% over the March 2022 quarter, offsetting some of the improvements in other measures of housing affordability. 
The wash up is that lower housing prices and higher incomes should make home ownership more achievable for non-homeowners, but headwinds remain in being able to save for a deposit and demonstrate the ability to service a loan amid such a high cost of living. With spring upon us, advertised stock levels are expected to rise. Inventory was already higher than average across Sydney, Melbourne and Hobart at the end of winter, and although the flow of new listings may not be as high as previous years, we could see advertised supply accumulating through spring due to a lack of housing demand. Amid higher advertised stock levels, vendors will be competing across a larger pool of available supply for fewer buyers. While this is positive news for buyers, sellers will need to be realistic in their pricing expectations and ensure they have a quality marketing campaign in place. With labour markets so tight, demonstrated by a 3.4% unemployment rate in July and some momentum gathering in income growth, we are not likely to see a material increase in the number of distressed listings or forced sales despite the higher interest rate environment. While labour markets could loosen to some extent under a contractionary interest rate setting, a substantial rise in unemployment or underemployment seems an unlikely outcome. The risk of housing stress is further minimised by serviceability buffers applied to borrowers as part of the loan approval assessment. As a closing remark, the context of the recent upswing is important to remember as the market navigates a downturn. Although housing values are on track to record a significant drop, the risk of widespread negative equity remains low, considering the substantial rise in housing values between September 2020 and April 2022. Nationally, home values rose by 28.6%, so even a 20% decline in housing values would result in housing values remaining above their pre-COVID levels. No doubt, we will continue to see a great deal of interest in housing trends as we move through spring. You can stay in touch with all our research at corelogic.com.au.